points. While on table two, Neil Robertson, runner-up at the Players' Championship, faces world number one, Mark Selby. Both these quarterfinals are played across two sessions and are the best of 17 frames. And is a full house here in Venue Cymru, just as you would expect. All looking forward to a fantastic week of snooker. As we are too, good afternoon. Welcome to Wales. Alongside me, the usual suspects, Neil Folds, Alan McManus, Stephen Hendry. We're in familiar surroundings. I think it's our fifth year in Clondidna with an ITV snooker event, but a brand new tournament, Stephen. Uh, and this is one that all the players wanted to be involved in. Oh, without a doubt. If you're one of the best players in the world, this is where you want to be this week. Um, when I was playing, if there were ever a new event, that's the ones that it, was, it would be cool to be the first person to win an event like this. And uh, Alan, £150,000 mm. prize pot, the biggest we've had in mm. one of our events. And the long format, just a little bit different this time. Players are going to love it. You know, the UK's uh, was traditionally best of 17 uh, from the first round. We've got that this week, and that's what the players really enjoy. They can settle into the match, two sessions, and the best player for sure will win this week. Looking forward to this one, Neil. Um, as we say, quality top to bottom. Barry Hearn says it's the golden generation of snooker stars here. It is, you know, um, and, and I think you've got to work so hard to get into it. Even last weekend in, in Gibraltar, the players were scrambling around trying to get through. David Gilbert was very close to making it here, but the fact is he didn't win a tournament. He got into two finals over the course of the season, or has so far. That's not enough. You've got to win something, and all these guys have won pretty heavyweight titles to get to this point. Let's see who is here then in London. Take a look at this lineup, uh, and they've all, all, every one of these is a triple crown winner, bar Kyron Wilson, obviously German Masters winner this year. But look at the quality there. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's an incredible lineup. I mean, give or take, possibly John Higgins, Ding Jim Wee. But apart from that, I mean, it's it's it's, it's a blue ribbon of, uh, event of, of the best players in the world. And I think it shows, Alan. That these are the players that have been doing it this year on the tour. The likes of um, Sean Murphy missing from Flandidno and Ding. Yeah. Names we're so familiar with, but they just haven't had the season that's earned them a place here. Yeah, and they'll be casting an eye on this today, make no mistake. They'll be envious in the practice room watching today and they'll, they'll you know, get a flavour for it as, as the week goes on. They'll want to be here next year. Stephen said the primary events, the big guns want to be here and some of them are missing. OK, let's have a look at the draw then, see who faces who. And uh, as we mentioned, Stuart Bingham had a, a win in Gibraltar uh, on Sunday uh, and that's earned him a... First up match against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Delightful, but some great matches to look forward to, Steve. Yeah, yeah, fabulous. I mean, you have to say, if Ronnie O'Sullivan plays the way he played in that final in Preston, he wins this event. It's as simple as that. But, you know, Stuart Bingham, if you want to come and play Ronnie O'Sullivan, he's got a win under his belt. That's the best way to approach the match. It's been difficult picking matches for Table 1 and Table 2 in that opening quarter-final stage. It is, yeah. Every match is, is potentially a final. You know, Mark Allen, top seed coming in plays against Kyron, who kind of crept into this uh, draw. So, uh, tough matches everywhere. Yeah, it? and we shouldn't forget Mark Selby. A lot of people said, well, why is he in it? Because he hasn't done very much. He actually won the, the China Championship, £150,000. He's done very little else, but I've got a feeling the long matches might suit his, his game, as we know, as he's proved before over the years. OK, before we look ahead to this afternoon's two matches, let's remind ourselves what happened a couple of weeks ago in Preston. Ronnie O'Sullivan's Players' Championship title defence began with a stubborn win over Barry Hawkins. The Rocket refused to go down under, even though his post-match accent was astoundingly antipodean. Get some more ranking points, mate. <laughs> In a potentially significant battle for Tour Championship qualification, Stuart Bingham beat David Gilbert. Neil Robertson overcame close friend Joe Perry and Judd Trump fired home three centuries in whitewashing Jimmy Robertson. The inevitable fatigue from a lengthy Indian Open return journey couldn't prevent John Higgins knocking out the world number one. And in the quarterfinals, the Scots pressed O'Sullivan hard before succumbing in front of a jam-packed Preston Guildhall crowd. Disappointment for Higgins, but heartbreak for Jack Lazowski, edged 6-5 by Judd Trump after leading 5-2. In the semi-finals, O'Sullivan overwhelmed an out-of-sorts Mark Allen, while Robertson ended Trump's hopes of a Coral Series clean sweep. But come trophy day and the title holder occupied a league of his own. O'Sullivan's timing was immaculate in every sense as the final finished in a fan frenzy. It was 10-4, Ronnie over and out in the match of the century. His legion of fans had 1,000 reasons to acclaim the Rocket, snooker's ultimate break builder and now favourite for more glory here at Venue Cymru. 
absolutely amazing scenes there uh, in Preston. Ronnie, the great showman, and Neil, I mean, I've never seen scenes like that at a snooker match before. It was such a great moment, wasn't it? To make that thousand centuries in the winning frame, the crowd got into it, and I think Preston deserves that, you know. Maybe they're, they're taking a break from playing there that I'm hearing. It might not be at the Guildhall for a little bit. Um, and it was brilliant. It was just one of those times. Snooker's not always like that, but that was a great moment. Yeah, we've talked often about Guildhall memories, Alan. That was a very <laughs> special one, wasn't it? It was, and I, I enjoyed it for the crowd as well and, and the history that the Guildhall has had down the years. And it was good to see Ronnie being the way I think he should be. You know, there's a bit of silliness with him down the years. We know that. But um, I, I just enjoyed the... You know, I've always said about Ronnie that, you know, a, a few things, a good-looking lad, he's a smart laddie, and sometimes he doesn't do himself the best of favours, but he did last week. He was awesome, and the way it finished was fantastic. And what a final. Never mind that final century to mm. take him to the thousand mark, but just the, the whole final to, to play in that way. It was absolutely sublime, wasn't he? Yep, yeah, it was uh, almost impossible to play against. Neil Robertson had one or two half chances early on, uh, a little bit unlucky, but um, Ronnie was just uh, just incredible on the day. And, and that thousand century, he's taken break build into a new level. And the way he the way he goes about it, and it's just incredible to watch. Yeah, well, it's taken him to the top of the Coral Cup standings alongside uh, Judd Trump level. There they are on prize money. Um, obviously, the winner of the Coral Cup will be the player who's won the most money over the course of the three tournaments. Uh, and at the minute. You know, Ronnie and, and Judd are out there in front. Yeah, I mean, consistency is not going to win you that Coral Cup as it wouldn't have got you in this event. You know, you've got to win titles. The prize money is quite top heavy. The first prize is always very big compared to slightly lower down. So, you know, it's all about winning this game now and, and it's proved the way that this format is this week and the players that are here. The first person who can stake their claim then to uh, to get home in the Coral Cup is Judd Trump. We're going to see him in action today. What are you expecting from Judd this week, Alan? Well, it'll be hurting from losing a couple of weeks ago, you know, at the Players' Championship. But uh, having the Grand Prix under his belt, he'll be really up for this tournament. It's the best eight, as we've said here. He's in good form. He's, uh, you know, him and Ronnie are the, the, probably the two to watch out for. But uh, he'll be very hungry, I think, today. Yeah, re real contrast in styles with these two players. Uh, Judd Trump is, is pretty much, you know, a bit crude to say, crash, bang, wallop. He wants to smash the Reds everywhere as soon as possible, make big breaks. Mark Williams likes to cherry pick. He likes to just pick off the Reds, you know, a little bit slower, but a little bit more precise. Um, so it's a real contrast. And I think uh, Mark Williams, well, let's be honest, Wales have had plenty to celebrate over the weekend and are still celebrating, but he would love to give them a, a home victory here, wouldn't he? He's showing signs of coming back to his World Championship winning form, but he's not stringing these matches together enough. You know, he's showing one or two really good matches. Think about Mark Williams is back. The next match he doesn't play quite to that level, but it's another opportunity. But it's a very tough game for him against Judd Trump. Equally intriguing match on the second mm -hmm. table. Uh, Mark Selby, Neil Robertson, good friends, know each other very well, played each other many, many times. If, if Ronnie wins this tournament, he could take over Mark Selby's spot at top of the rankings. He could. He's got a lot to think about in the coming weeks, Mark, isn't he? With it, you know, World Championship starts four weeks this Saturday, but uh, this week's a huge week for him, I think. He's, going to, uh, he, he's got China to come after this, but uh, he's not performed, as we've mentioned many times, he's not performed in these shores that, uh, as a world number one really should but, uh, yeah, time to step up. You might, you might as well just give him the China Championship now, the, the, the China Open now. He always wins over there. You know, you might just not let no one go over there. Um, as far as Neil Robertson is concerned, you know, it will hurt him that he was beaten so heavily in that final, I think. You know, it, would, it will do. You know, there's no question. OK, don't go away, because coming up after the break, we will get the Tour Championship underway as Judd Trump looks to continue his impressive form in the Coral Snooker Series. He takes on Mark Williams.